Hi everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Mass Effect. Let's head towards the next part of the plot. Saren's hiding something. Give me more time. Stall them. Stall the council? Don't be ridiculous. Your investigation is over, Garrus. Commander Shepard, Garrus Vicarian. I was the officer in charge of the CSEC investigation into Saren. Come across anything I should know about? Saren's a specter. Most of his activities are classified. I couldn't find anything solid. But I know he's up to something. Like you humans say, I feel it in my gut. I think the Council's ready for us, Commander. Good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen to you. You don't want to keep the Council waiting. I bet all these staircases aren't just for show. They make for good defensive positions if this place is ever attacked. I like the fountain. Very soothing. So, the council basically just cut the investigation because they didn't like the, what they were hearing. So they're probably corrupt. Even more corrupt than we thought before. And they didn't give a crap that one of their spectres has gone rogue. Good old councils. Oh, this place is huge. Wasn't expecting that. Must be going the wrong way. No, there we go. The hearing's already started. Come on. The Geth attack is a matter of some concern, but there is nothing to indicate Saren was involved in any way. The investigation by Citadel Security turned up no evidence to support your charge of treason. An eyewitness saw him kill Nihilus in cold blood. We've read the Eden Prime reports, Ambassador. The testimony of one traumatized dock worker is hardly compelling proof. I resent these accusations. Nihilus was a fellow Spectre and a friend. That just let you catch him off guard. Captain Anderson, you always seem to be involved when humanity makes false charges against me. And this must be your protege, Commander Shepard. The one who let the beacon get destroyed. You're the one who destroyed the beacon. Then you tried to cover it up. Shift the blame to cover your own failures. Just like Captain Anderson. He's taught you well. But what can you expect? from a human. Hmm. I don't think the council will like me saying any of these, so I might as well just say what feels satisfying. You can expect me to kill you the next time we meet. Your species needs to learn its place, Shepard. You're not ready to join the council. You're not even ready to join the Spectres. He has no right to say that! That's not his decision! Shepard's admission into the Spectres is not the purpose of this meeting. This meeting has no purpose. The humans are wasting your time, Counselor. And mine. You can't hide behind the Council forever. There is still one outstanding issue. Commander Shepard's vision. It may have been triggered by the Beacon. Are we allowing dreams into evidence now? How can I defend my innocence against this kind of testimony? I agree. Our judgment must be based on facts and evidence, not wild imaginings and reckless speculation. Do you have anything else to add, Commander Shepard? No, I do actually agree with that. You've made your decision. I won't waste my breath. The Council has found no evidence of any connection between Saren and the Geth. Ambassador, your petition to have him disbarred from the Spectres is denied. I'm glad to see justice was served. This meeting is adjourned. It was a mistake bringing you into that hearing, Captain. You and Saren have too much history. It made the Council question our motives. I know Saren. He's working with the Geth for one reason. To exterminate the entire human race. Every colony we have is at risk. Every world we control is in danger. Even Earth isn't safe. Tell me about this history between you and Saren. 
I worked with him on a mission a long time ago. Things went bad. Real bad. We shouldn't talk about this here. But I know what he's like. And he has to be stopped. What's our next step? As a Spectre, he's virtually untouchable. We need to find some way to expose him. What about Garrus, that CSEC investigator? We saw him arguing with the Executor. That's right. He was asking for more time to finish his report. Seems like he was close to finding something on Saren. Yeah, the CSEC is obviously involved in this massive conspiracy. We'll try and bring them down if we can. Yeah, I don't trust him either. That is true. He's a Turian. I don't want him on our side. Not all Turians are like Saren. If he can help, we need to find him. I have a contact in CSEC who can help us track Garrus down. His name is Harkin. Forget it. They suspended Harkin last month, drinking on the job. I won't waste my time with that loser. You won't have to. I don't want the Council using your past history with Saren as an excuse to ignore anything we turn up. Shepard will handle this. Yeah, you should treat the Captain better than that. You can't just cut Captain Anderson out of this investigation. The Ambassador's right. I need to step aside. I need to take care of some business. Captain, meet me in my office later. Harkin's probably getting drunk at Cora's Den. It's a dingy little club in the lower section of the wards. Maybe there's another way to find evidence against Saren. You should talk to Barla Vaughn over in the Financial District. Rumor has it he's an agent for the Shadow Broker. The Shadow Broker? An information dealer. Buys and sells secrets to the highest bidder. I've heard Balavan's one of the top representatives. He might know something about Saren, but his information won't come cheap. You and Saren have a history. What happened? About 20 years ago, I was part of a mission in the Skillian Verge. I was working with Saren to find and remove a known terrorist threat. Saren eliminated his target, but a lot of people died along the way, innocent people. And the official records just covered it all up. But I saw how he operates. No conscience. No hesitation. He'd kill a thousand innocent civilians to end a war without a second thought. Hmm, yeah, I think I would as well, but I'm not gonna say that. Our ambassador doesn't seem to get along with the Council. He's just frustrated. The Council's always preaching that we need to be part of the galactic community. But for them, it's a one-way street. They want us to expand and settle unstable regions like the Skillian Verge and the Attican Traverse. But when we run into trouble, they don't want to help us out. Everyone knows it's only a matter of time until we get a seat on the Council. The Ambassador just thinks it should happen sooner rather than later. And I agree. Who cares if we get a seat on the Council? What's the big deal? If the Council passes a ruling on an interstellar matter, we have to follow it. We don't have the fleets or political allies to defy them. Once we get a seat on the Council, we'll be able to influence those rulings. Protect our own interests. No more jumping through hoops whenever we want something. Take this mess we're in now. If humanity had a seat on the Council, we'd just send the Citadel fleet out to take care of Saren and his Geth. Problem solved. Yeah, it wouldn't work like that at all. Uh, that's not how governments work, you know. Like, especially supranational governance, like... Uh, the European Union, you can't get anything done there. You still get screwed over. Yeah, there's no point in... There, there isn't really any point to being on this council. I should... If they have the power to do things like that, then they need to have that power taken away, really. We don't want to be part of that. We, we want to get rid of it, I think. You don't think much of Harkin. The guy joined CSEC about 20 years ago. He's been an embarrassment to our species ever since. Roughing up suspects in custody, Bribery accusations, alcohol and drug use. The embassy used to step in when he got in trouble. But I guess enough was enough. The guy's a scumbag. He should have been cut loose a long time ago. He was one of the first human CSEC officers. Guess it would have looked bad if he got fired. A lot of backroom deals were worked out over the years to keep him on the force. Politics is a dirty business sometimes. But it looks like his time's run out. We've got enough humans in CSEC now to stop protecting him. I want to know more about the Spectres. They're not your typical government agency. They tend to work alone, behind the scenes. 
They take care of problems the Council can't. It's not easy preserving peace across an entire galaxy. The Council prefers to use diplomacy and negotiation. But sometimes more extreme measures are needed. What happens when a Spectre goes rogue, like Saren? It doesn't happen often. The Council is careful when they select their candidates. But when something does go wrong, there's usually only one solution. Send another Spectre to bring the rogue agent down. They sound like shadow operatives. Everything about them is classified. We don't even know how many there are. The latest Alliance estimate puts their numbers under a hundred. But the Council couldn't do its job without them. They're the Citadel's top agents. The last line of defense. The final option before open war. The entire galaxy respects and fears them. If a Spectre shows up, you know something big is about to happen. How do they decide who becomes a Spectre? You can't just apply to join. There's no training program. Spectres aren't made. They're born. The Council's always looking for exceptional individuals. People who can get the job done. Like you. They've been watching you for years. They see something in you. They want you on their side. Nihilus was supposed to give them a final recommendation. But with him gone, things are still up in the air. What's their command structure like? There is no command structure. Each specter answers directly to the Council. Sometimes they're sent on specific missions. Other times, they act on their own. They tend to operate outside the law, do whatever it takes to accomplish their goals. The Council just turns a blind eye. Spectres have a lot of power, Shepard. Tell me more about the Shadow Broker. He's a necessary evil of galactic politics. Buying and selling information is a part of the game, and the Shadow Broker just happens to be the best player on the field. Always sells to the highest bidder. Doesn't get involved in politics, doesn't pick sides. A simple system, but it works. He's not a threat to anyone, not directly. He's just a resource we can use, or she is. Or maybe they are. Nobody really knows. Tell me about Barla Vaughn. He specializes in moving large sums of money without leaving a paper trail. A financial genius, doesn't do anything illegal. But he knows all the loopholes. He's got an impressive client list. Ambassadors, diplomats, specters. That's probably why the Shadow Broker uses him. I should go. Good luck, Shepard. I'll be over in the Ambassador's office if you need anything else. Politics on a galactic scale is just as seedy as it is on a national so, scale. this is where the Council passes judgment on all us little folk, huh? Ever get the feeling we're in over our heads, Commander? This is it. The very heart of the Citadel. The pinnacle of galactic power. Kind of makes your head spin if you think about it too much. What are those cherry trees? You sure have to climb a lot of stairs to reach the council. I think that's supposed to be symbolic of their importance. Yep, get them closer to God. I bet all these staircases aren't just for show. They make for good defensive positions if this place is ever attacked. So, the Presidium is actually huge, and while we've got the option to access it, maybe I should have a proper look around. So I don't know if we'll be allowed here again. I mean, I'm sure we will at some point, but I don't know if we'll just have free access to it. Okay, well, there's not a lot up here. So I have changed my push to sort button, it's now pause, and I seem to be allowed to run with it, which is pretty nice. Although running doesn't seem to make you any faster, we'll still do it. Is this where I come from, or it's just the same thing? No, I think this is either side. Uh, I don't know if doors are marked on the map or not. I'm guessing these aren't real doors. No.
guy's up to something. What guy? The one over by the keeper. What? Oh, no, I wasn't. Never mind. Um, yes, is there something you want? Why are you so interested in the Keepers? Keepers? I've got no interest in the Keep- Don't get coy. I know what I saw. I, uh... I'm not so sure I should be talking to you about this. We're just talking. Is there something wrong with that? No. I guess it wouldn't hurt to tell you. I'm using a small scanner to gather readings on the Keepers. So far I've had mixed results. I find it difficult to get near the creatures. Why were you being so secretive about it, though? Well, technically we're not supposed to disturb the Keepers. I don't really think my scanning disturbs them, but the authorities might disagree. I'd like to do it more openly, but it's not really worth getting arrested over. I could help you out. I'm not worried about the authorities. I don't even know who you are. I'm Commander Shepard, with the Alliance Military. Hmm. Well, I, I suppose I could use the help. You'll need this. It's the scanning device I developed. Activate it each time you see a Keeper. All collected data will automatically upload to my database. I'll even send a few credits your way for each unique scan. What are you doing with the data once you've scanned it? Trying to learn whatever I can about the Keepers. We see them working everywhere, yet we know so little about them. I'm a scientist. I want to know what makes them tick. I should get going then. Yes, I have much work myself. So long, and good luck with the scanning. I think any opportunity to undermine CSEC or the council or any authority that's not human we should take. And I think I saw one up here, so let's go scan him before we might not be allowed back in here again. Uh, certainly once the council realizes um, I plan to undermine them at every possible opportunity, then they're probably not going to let me in. I swear I saw one. I don't know if these guys standing around the top are guards, or... I don't know, maybe they're on a lunch break? How many are there, by the way? There are... 21. Ah, oh, that's not too bad. We can probably do that. I'd like to know a lot more about the Keepers when I played through this game on my own. And I think I've probably only played it once, honestly. Because otherwise the second time I've probably done this quest, uh, I certainly didn't get the Keeper quest. I think mean, there's a huge amount here, though, in the Presidium. Don't be ridiculous. The Volus won't be joining the Council for years. I'm not so sure. The humans are making a strong push, and you can bet the Volus will be right on their coattails if they succeed. Allowing the humans to join us is a sound strategic move. But the Volus? No. The Hanar are likely to be next, then the Elcor. You may be right. Though the Hanar need to lighten up a bit first. You just don't like them because you have trouble understanding them. We won't let the Volus join. I, it's bad enough that things, you know, if there are four races on the council, nothing is going to get done. Certainly nothing is going to get done quickly. Uh, if there were seven races on the council, nothing would ever get agreed, ever. That's how politics works. The more things there are, the few people agree. And that's not an excuse for some dictator. I don't agree with that. And I don't really think that political people should be doing very much at all. I think people can make their own minds up most of the time. But having all those races on the council, it's, it's not going to work. Not that it works now. Not that it'll work when humans are on it. I don't suppose keepers are marked on my map. No, that would be far too easy. I wouldn't like that, actually, I think. So we've got two leads, then. We can go to the Shadow Broker. Garrus, and that's our subplot. 
So Garrus or the Shadow Broker is next. Uh, I think Garrus is probably more straightforward than the Shadow Broker. Probably slightly more trustworthy than someone called the Shadow Broker. So let's go see Garrus. Chase leads while this smug Turian runs around with his geth troopers. That's politics, Chief. I hate politics. Didn't seem like Gar I think don't think Garrus Garrus was a plant though. I think he was quite sincere that he wanted to finish his uh, investigation. And the boss of the C sect don't particularly seem to like the Spectres either. So I think that is probably our best lead right now. There's a lot of stuff to draw here. Please do not disturb the keepers. Oh, shut up. Yeah, if it angers her, we're definitely going to do it. This one believes it has the right. You're creating a public disturbance. It's against Citadel regulations. This one is unsure why the other would not wish word of the Enkindlers to be spread. That Hanar refuses to listen to reason. Why can't it act in an orderly and lawful manner? Are there laws being broken here? I am not unreasonable. The Hanar is free to spew its nonsense once it purchases an evangelical permit. Oh my god, you need an evangelical permit now. So if the Hanar gets a permit, it's allowed to preach? No. Registered evangelicals must follow regulations. There are specific areas where preaching is legal. Failure to follow the regulations results in the forfeiture of the license. Why don't you just arrest the Hanar? I could arrest the Jelly, but my superior has requested that I find a solution that does not anger the Hanar. The Hanar become... vocal when they feel their religious beliefs are being suppressed. What's the purpose behind the evangelical permits? Forcing religious evangelicals to register for a permit weeds out undesirables. It keeps the area safe. The Citadel is too important to become a battleground for a religious war. If you'd like, I could talk to the Hanar for you. I have argued with the stubborn Jelly all afternoon. You are certainly welcome to try. Do you desire to learn of the Enkindlers? Or has the Honorable CSEC officer enlisted assistance? What's going on here? The CSEC officer requests that this one purchase an evangelical permit to spread the truth of the Enkindlers. If that's all the CSEC officer wants, why not just buy the permit? The truth of the Enkindlers is universal. This one humbly believes that the truth should not be suppressed. Exacting payment as a means of imposing limits upon the truth is an abrogation of this one's religious freedom. Who are the Enkindlers? Your people know them as the Protheans. They are the true creators of this one's people. The Enkindlers raised the Hanar from ignorance into consciousness by granting this one's people the gift of speech. So you're breaking the law by preaching without a permit right now? The CSEC officer states that preaching in this place is forbidden and preaching anywhere on the Citadel requires a permit. This one humbly submits that it is not preaching to state the truth of the Enkindlers, and thus no permit should be necessary. Mm, so you agree with the law on other people, but not on yourself. That's... No, that's not really good, is it? I mean, I don't agree with the law, but then I don't think... I, you know, no one, even no one should have to obey this law, or everyone should. Whereas you kind of think you should be exempt, but not everyone else, so I don't like that. Get out of here. This is the Presidium, not a church. Evangelize somewhere else. This one's beliefs will not be suppressed. If others wish to try, they are welcome to do so. Oh, that didn't work. 
Any progress with that Hanar? Sorry, I'll let you know if I come up with something. I don't care what the something is, as long as it rids me of the Hanar. The CSEC officer states that preaching in this place is forbidden, and preaching anywhere on the Citadel requires a permit. This one humbly submits that it is not preaching to state the truth of the enkindlers, and thus no permit should be necessary. Is this really how you want to represent the enkindlers? The truth of the enkindlers must be made known. They gave the Hanar language and gave the universe the mass relays. This one only wishes to spread the truth to any who will listen. There is no intent to cause trouble. I uh, see. That's, that's our first encounter of the uh, good-bad system, and it's very, very annoying. I don't like it. I'm not going to buy him a permit. I'll be back. I'll be back once I've This one will people. continue to spread its message. So look, I've only got this much renegade points and a tiny bit of paragon points. So I do like that you accumulate the points separately rather than cancelling the points out. That is good, um, but I still don't like the overall uh, the overall system. Right, how do I unlock sniper rifles then? I should probably investigate that before I do any more level ups. Oh, I see. Unlock sniper rifles. There we go. So why can't I unlock that bit? Maybe cause, just because I'm level 4, hopefully. Right, what's assault training? Yeah, let's go for that. So this is lockpick, is it? Yeah, I think so. And shields are pretty good. We'll get some shields. Oh, I'll break other people's shields. That makes you more effective healing other people. That's probably a good plan. Um, how long has this video been? Somewhere around half an hour. Let's keep heading towards CSEC. I assume I'm heading towards CSEC. Yes, I am. No, wait, I'm not trying to go to CSEC first. Whoops. Got to go to Cora's Den in the lower wards. Well, that's probably going to be a bit of a trek because we haven't been there yet. So I think in that case, I am going to call an end to the video here. Mostly because I'm a fool and was heading the wrong way. But it all counts. That's not the lower wards either. You have arrived at Cora's Den, a gentleman's club in the wards. Well, that was easier than I expected. We'll go with that. Thank you for watching. Uh, let's get some stuff out the codex cleared. The Elcor are a citadel species. The Hanar are a citadel species known for excessive politeness. They speak with scrupulous precision and take offense at improper language. Hanar that expect to deal with other species take special courses to help them unlearn their tendency to take offense at improper speech. All Hanar have two names. The face name is known to the world. 
The sole name is kept for use among close friends and relations. Hanar never refer to themselves in the first person in conversation with someone they know on a face name basis. To do so is considered egotistical. So instead they refer to themselves as this one or the impersonal it. Their home world, Kajay, has 90% ocean cover and orbits an energetic white star, resulting in a permanent blanket of cloud. Due to the presence of Prothean ruins on the world, many Hanar worship them, and Hanar myths often speak of an elder race that civilized them by teaching them language. The Asari were the, the second species to join them. The second species to join the citadel, the Salarians are warm-blooded amphibians with a hyperactive metabolism. Salarians think fast, talk fast, and move fast. To Salarians, other species seem sluggish and dull-witted. Unfortunately, their metabolic speed leaves them with a relatively short lifespan. Salarians over the age of 40 are a rarity. The Salarians were responsible for advancing the development of the primitive Krogan species to use as soldiers during the Rachni Wars. They were also behind the creation of the genophage bioweapon the Turians used to quell the Krogan rebellion several centuries later. Salarians are known for their observational capability and non-linear thinking. This manifests as an aptitude for research and espionage. They are constantly experimenting and inventing, and it is generally accepted that they always know more than they are letting on. So it's interesting that these guys only live 40 years. Uh, it's quite, quite an important Humanity's thing, probably. Humanity's first contact with an alien race occurred in 2157. At that time, the Alliance allowed survey fleets to activate...